The Donkey and the Angel, written by Ben Sion Spitz, narrated by Jennifer Cahen. A thin haze covered the fortified city of Damascus. Dozens of stone chimneys belched the smoke of cooking ovens into the morning sky. The slapping of sandals on old stone mixed with the sounds of hooves and creaking wagon wheels. Clanging metal and the hollering of early market hagglers created a cacophony of sound. The smell of stale bread, rotting apples, and unwashed bodies filled the air. Five horses, followed by three donkeys, all with riders, exited the heavy gates of Damascus. They trotted rapidly southward on the Bashan Road. On either side of the road were golden fields of wheat, barley, and spelt. The five horses were beautiful Egyptian stallions, all of a deep chestnut color. Their riders wore bejeweled Moabite robes. One of the donkeys was a white, neatly combed jenny with a shiny black harness. Her rider was an ancient, wiry man in flowing black robes. The jenny was followed by two dull-colored jacks, each with a servant in a gray tunic. Finally, we're out of that dreadful city, Hamra the white jenny brayed to Abbott and Costell, the two jacks behind her. Yeah, smelly city, Costell agreed. Noisy city. Abbott chimed in. Smelly, Costell insisted. Noisy, Abbott repeated. Quiet, you two, Hamra yelled at them. Sorry, Hamra, they both chanted. The stonework was the worst part, Hamra said. It was so uneven it hurt my hooves. Let's take a break and let those prancing fools get ahead. Hamra stopped suddenly. Costell and Abbott stopped. What's the matter with you? Hamra's rider yelled at her. My hooves are hurting, and I don't want to look at the backside of those Egyptian jerks anymore, Hamra brayed. Her rider didn't seem to understand. Why do you keep talking to Bilam like he'll understand? Kostel asked. The only alternative is to ignore him, and that seems rude, Hamra answered. Works for me, Abbott said. That's because you are rude. Costell pointed out. I'll show you, rude! Abbott slammed his body into Costell. Both riders cried out in pain. Knock it off! Hamra commanded. Sorry, Hamra! They chanted. Bilam squeezed his knees into Hamra's body. Move on, girl! He whispered. Hamra ignored Bilam until the Egyptian stallions were several donkey lengths ahead. Bilam kept squeezing his knees and instructing Hamra to move. Without warning, she started to trot at an easy pace. Costell and Abbott followed. Bilam tipped over precariously, but quickly regained his balance on the saddle. Where are you going? Costell asked Hamra. Didn't you hear Bilam's discussions with the Moabite princes? Their king, Balak, wants Bilam to curse the Israelites. Curse them? They're in big trouble, Abbott said. Remember what happened to the Aramean tribe that he cursed? That was horrible. I think this time it's a bad idea, Hamra said. Why? What's the matter? Bilam is really powerful. Who can stand up to him? Abbott asked. I think the Israelites have some special protection, said Hamra. How do you know? Costell asked. Bilam was murmuring in his sleep. They are blessed. They are blessed. God does not allow. God does not allow. So why are we going? Abbott asked. Because Bilam is a stubborn man. The cavalcade trotted southward uneventfully for several days. The road led up the mountain range on the eastern side of the Jordan River. On either of the side of the road grew lush vineyards with stakes raising the vines to man height. Red grapes peeked out from under large green leaves. To the west they saw an enormous blue lake reflecting the morning sun. The Egyptian horses rounded a corner on the road. Hamra sensed sudden heat and a shimmering light in front of her. Bilam! Do you sense that? Hamra brayed. Bilam was oblivious. The shimmering light transformed into a winged man holding a fiery sword. The winged man gave Hamra an evil smile, raised his sword, and approached She brayed and stopped. Bilam was busy putting leaves in his smoking pipe 
and instinctively squeezed his knees into Hammer's sides. You are the dumbest being I know, Hammer brayed, and ran off the road into the vineyards as the winged man swung his sword at them. Hammer ran under and through the thick growth of vineyards. Bilam was jostled as she galloped over the uneven undergrowth. He kept ducking to avoid smashing his head into the vines, still holding his pipe in his outstretched hand, clutching the harness tightly with the other hand. Grapes fell on Bilam's head and spurted their red juice down his face. Hamra ran up to the next vine. Bilam could not move his body out of the way. The vine banged into his elbow's outstretched arm, pushing his hand violently into his face. The long mouthpiece of the pipe entered his eye. Red liquid continued to flow down his face. Curse you, you dumb monkey! Bilam yelled, dropping his pipe and banged his fist into Hamra's side. You want to curse me? Hamra brayed loudly. You ugly, hairless monkey! I just saved you from that crazed angel! Hamra made her way cautiously on a path back to the road. From within the vineyard path, she looked both ways for signs of the angel. She spotted Costell and Abbott nibbling on some vines by the side of the road. When she was satisfied there was no one else around, she got back on the road. Hamra, Costell brayed, where'd you go? I was escaping that crazed winged man. Did you see him? Yes, Abbott answered. He was frightening, but he disappeared when you left the road. Let's go forward and keep our eyes open, Hamra suggested. These humans are all blind. It's up to us to defend them. The donkeys continued on the road. Bilam had taken some materials from his pack and bandaged his eye. The road climbed higher. The vineyards were laden with large, ripe red grapes. The vineyards were protected by low stone walls. Suddenly, the hair all over Hamra stood on end. She saw the shimmering. The rampaging angel appeared a few feet away and ran at Hamra with an outstretched sword on fire. The angel raised his sword and slashed at Hamra. Hamra jumped rightward, smashing into the side of the stone wall. Bilam's leg was crushed by the impact. Bilam screamed in pain. In fury, he smashed his fist into Hamra's side and then screamed again from the pain in his hand. You blind, crazy human! Hamra brayed at the top of her lungs. You soft, two-footed weasel! Why can't you hear me? Why can't you see? This angel is trying to kill us and all you can do is hit me! The angel disappeared. Hamra kept trotting, afraid to stay near the place of the attack. The road climbed even higher. On either side of the road, vineyards gave way to olive groves. The olive trees were thick and gnarled, heavy with young green olives. The groves were protected by high stone walls. Protruding from the right side of the wall was a tower of rock. The bottom of the tower made the road narrow. Only one donkey at a time could pass through the narrowing. Hamra trembled, looking at the tight passage. That is the perfect place for an ambush, Hamra thought. That angel will reappear and attack us and there will be nowhere to go. Hamra stopped. Backwards is not safe either. This angel can reappear wherever he wants. Why does he want us dead? I wish I could make Bilam understand. We will die for his mule-headedness, she moved slowly, her fur tingling with the expectation of danger. Wait here until after I pass, Hamra instructed the jacks. You're the boss, Abbott said. I thought Bilam was the boss, Costell said. He may be the boss, but Hamra's our boss, Abbott said. Why do we need a boss? It's bad enough having a human grinding his knees into your size because he wants you to move. I don't need other bosses, said Costell. Quiet, both of you, Hamra commanded. I should let you guys go ahead and get your heads chopped off. Sorry, Hamra, they both chanted. Hamra reached the narrow passageway. The shimmering repeated itself and materialized into the shining angel with a fiery sword. Hamra could not move to either side, but she was prepared. She quickly buckled her legs and dropped to the ground. Bilam fell hard on the saddle and gasped in pain. The angel sword swung unnoticed over Bilam's head. Bilam grabbed his long staff from his pack and wrapped Hamra strongly on the head. What have I done to you that you hit me three times already? Hamra was surprised at the different sound. She felt Bilam stiffen on the saddle and was shocked when he answered. Because you ridicule me, Bilam yelled at her. 
If I would have a sword, I would kill you. Aren't I your donkey, your beloved, which you've ridden your entire life? Have I ever shamed you? Hammer retorted with the unusual sound. No, Bilam admitted as a light shimmered in front of him. He saw the angel with a burning sword. Bilam jumped off Hammer and bowed his head until it touched the dirt. Why have you hit your donkey three times? The angel asked in a thunderous voice. I came to intercept you. She saw me and saved you from my hand three times. If it were not for her, you would be dead, while she would remain alive. I have sinned, Bilam cried out with his head pressed to the ground. I did not know you were against me. If you want me to stop, I will go back. Go with the men, the angel commanded. However, only that which I tell you, that is what you will speak. Bilam got up off the ground and mounted Hamra. He glanced at the angel. The angel scowled at him with red eyes as fiery as his sword. Bilam bowed his head quickly and urged Hamra forward with a gentle squeeze. Hamra looked at the angel. The angel smiled at Hamra with kind eyes and winked at her before disappearing forever. Hamra grained her neck to look back at Bilam. She pitied the dumb animal in her charge. This has been The Donkey and the Angel, written by Ben Sion Spitz, narrated by Jennifer Cahen.